Yeah. Quiet in today. It is, yeah. For a Thursday. All right. Um, so why don't we start with if there's any any other general uh, announcements or things people want to, to bring out, they can. One thing I'll mention is that we've got um, there's there's some ideas percolating in a couple of different areas. I know that um, a few a few folks are going to be talking to the different team leaders to figure out organizationally a couple of ways that we can uh, improve things, how we can make sure that the internal team communication and the cross team communication is uh, is improved because that's one thing we have been hearing a lot of is just making sure that we know what each team is doing so that teams are avoiding redundancies. There's been you know where that's part of our rounds two process, so so we're getting into that. Um, also, a couple of us are beginning to talk about, you know, we've got a spreadsheet that's leading to our org chart that's helping us have a good sense of where some of the team's organization is. We have an amazing skills list and team's roster in a different spot. And if we can add another little component that, that makes it so that we're aware of what people's availability and interest are currently, rather than when they first signed up, I think we can turn all three of those into a pretty cool visual tool that will let any of us get a bird's eye view of what's going on, where things are needed, where they might plug themselves in, or who someone might want to talk to, you know, to, to see if they're interested in getting, getting involved. So we'll, we'll do some more scheming on that. I like scheming. Scheming sounds good. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I thought I'd just, uh, I had a, I, um, Asher joined earlier on today and I gave him a, basically a one-on-one -on -one sync to just try and catch him up because he's interested in helping with organizational stuff. He comes from project management and that sort of kind of things. So I spent like 15, 20 minutes on the call and yeah, he's, I think, well, we'll see, see if how much he wants to spend time with, but, um, but I think he, I think he's going to be a real asset and a real sort of helpful person. If nothing else, I'm going to use him as a, a, a point to talk to just to be able to sort my brain out when it's full. <laughs> Thanks, Asher. The thoughts I'm having, do they sound like a reasonable way of doing something? Probably not, but you know, it's nice to have a sounding board. Uh, we can... I hear you, Ash. You're, you're not making any noise, Ash. Uh... <laughs> he had that headset earlier on. Um, and yeah, and Chris and I had a pretty big chat last night as well. Just a random, we were going to have comms call in Calter and it didn't, nobody joined. So we just chatted for about all sorts. It was no, the great. loneliest, most fun comms call ever. <laughs> Well, good stuff, and I'm glad you were able to, to try out Kaltura and kind of get some of the, the details on that maybe figured out. Um, maybe tomorrow, if we want, we can try doing doing our call here on that and see see what's what. The problem uh, with Kaltura and like Zoom is Zoom, you can just join off of a link and Kaltura needs an account. Yeah, it's a bit of a process, the, yeah. That's the only sticking point. It's like everyone has to kind of do a bit of advanced work rather than just dropping in, which yeah. is, you know, an inconvenience. Yeah, yeah. But I think once we... Once we especially for the team sides, that's going to be great in terms of us being able to use the whiteboard and share some of the stuff and do sort of some, some more in-depth collaborations and waving our hands. So we'll, we'll... By the way, Miro is amazing for collaboration. Miro? <laughs> yes, it is. I've seen, I say it's quite a common one, but there's loads out there. There's like, there's even a free whiteboard app that I've seen that is good for whiteboarding and stuff. So um, there's plenty, honestly, the amount of video calls I've joined is like, oh, try this tool and try that tool. I've got a list as long as my arm of tools we could try. So we're yeah. not going to run out of things to try. It's just trying to get to something quickly and use it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the go. finite time to try all of these tools. That's right. <coughs> Luckily, we've, we've, got, we've got, got a lot of us to, to experiment and see which things are, are working well. Um, just Christine joining now. Um, so uh, I think was it, I don't see uh, Manuel on the call, but I thought Gio was maybe doing their deep dive today. Was there a different team that was doing their, their dive today? Um, I, think it, I think it's probably Gio, but I don't know where Gio is right now. There's no worry on that. We can always do that on a different time. They may be, they may be otherwise engaged. Uh, what do we it do? Happens. It does. Why don't we do a quick run through of the teams uh, and, and we can see, see where things are at and if there's any needs that are there. Um, do you want to start us off, Christine? Oh, hi. Sure. So, um, yeah, since we're uh, just uh, going a little s slowly right now, uh, we're just, um, we'll try to start integrating our workflow into the Dataverse. 
um, and we yeah we started doing some uh, data extraction work we mainly just started collecting trending data so we're also looking to find more like, efficient way to annotate data for example and we'll be looking into a few tools for that and so i yeah i think that's uh that's that's it for us great uh, how are things going over at risk plan um we are expanding our team great uh, and um um we decided that probably it's a good idea not just to create like very strict uh, tasks where you ask people to bring you the a specific result, but however, let the researchers show their thinking and creativity and give uh, like kind of an opposite of uh, giving very exact kind of direction. Here is the input, here is the output, go, go do that and that. I'll do it a little bit uh, differently at the moment. For example, here is the good papers, here is the bad papers. Uh, try to think what would be the best methodology in your opinion to understand the difference between that. So this is, uh, this is kind of just a testing of a new approach. Uh, beside that, uh, no, uh, no any updates really. It, so it sounds like you're um, pushing towards treating people a little bit more autonomously and like engaged and interested people rather than giving them like I say, here's this individual task, go do it. Some people need that much handholding, so don't necessarily abandon it as an idea completely. But a lot of people who are joining are obviously intelligent, capable people who are, have their own ideas. So I don't think it's a bad idea to allow right. people to right. try to solve and this, problems. This task but, is pretty creative, so why not? Yeah, exactly. Okay. The more experiments we can get done in, in such a short amount of time, we'll find out hopefully more solutions and more, more ways of approaching it. And people can feel more engaged in like their owning, creating a solution rather than this person give me these four things to do in this order and I'll go do them. That, that's not very interesting more for very many people. Yeah, but yeah I'm just learning on here. For sure. Yeah. And not, not, to, not to denigrate the people who are also putting in all of their, their in, intelligence and work on, the, uh, on those, those team pieces as well, because that, that's also vital. But yeah, I think it's going to be great as we get sort of diversify the different approaches that people are able to, to take to, to find the ones that are kind of suiting them on that, that's great. Uh, Lukash, any? any uh... Uh, nothing new to report. I mean, more or less the same. I mean, perfect. We, yeah. It's um, ongoing and we know it's a constant oh. ongoing. Yeah. <laughs> is, there, is there anything you, no, you go, Daniel, it's fine. I was just going to say, and also kudos. I, th I think that the more we're able to work on those pieces of brevity, that's awesome. Of being able to just be like, "Yep, nothing new to report." That's fantastic. So yeah, and <laughs> and I'm partially observing and helping uh, Lukas with the uh, the search engine or like discovery engine piece. And in reality, the complexity of you know the the task at hand is beyond uh, com our comprehension as individuals. That's why it's sometimes very overwhelming to even like present the, the progress right. report. Uh, but I, I mean, that, unless we don't have a huge blocker in the sense I need 10 people uh, fluent in, I don't know, Chinese and Java and uh, with black belt in Kung Fu. Okay, I'm okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean I'm, like, yeah, yeah. Please don't come to me with that that request because <laughs> I will go look for people and it's not gonna be easy. <laughs> I will no, go look. Just, just say, I, I know mean, where to find them. <laughs> Even with you, with you do uh, progress in the sense of just half step forward a day or uh, two days, yeah. something that it's good. I mean, the the most important thing. Uh, yeah, we're not yeah. we're not in a sprint. We're in a marathon. We are. Yeah. We have to realize that it is a, it's going to be a long slog to build things, and it's about incremental progress. In, 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 incremental progress. Checking in that the progress is going in the right direction. Making sure that there's not you know you can't learn nothing to learn from. But it's just, yeah, keeping patting yourself on the back going, um, it, something's happening, it's fine, even though it, it, most, it could only seem like small from the outside. Yeah. The most amazing piece of progress that I'm observing is the actual convergence to the, the common language, or at least commitment and understanding that we're speaking different languages. And that is bringing a lot of positive progress. Because, yeah. you know, every time I, I post some crazy diagram, like I... I know that it's wrong, but people are willing to uh, communicate why they think it's wrong. And through us, you know, combining our perspective, 
we really, you know, uh, really polish what, whatever vision we have for very complex, specific things. And to, yeah. to give and you I a think a quite uh, remark, I think that I uh, described this already in the conversation with uh, Arthur, I think, and some of other members of our team. <laughs> Namely, we have all possible uh, issues, wrinkles, uh, problems of a relative huge organization, corporate academic or, uh, organization, without any profits or advantages of those uh, uh, institutions. Uh, like not only financial, financially, but also in terms of organization. We don't have time to have uh, like 20 minute uh, long presentations uh, in PowerPoint about different projects in different groups. We cannot um, prepare a kind of uh, two days workshop on uh, to exchange ideas physically, I mean like in, in person. So yeah, that's I think that's uh, a huge disadvantage of, of the whole enterprise that everything is virtual. And we already saw uh, that uh, yeah, it, it can be very uh, problematic on multiple levels. Yeah, so just to give a sneak peek to, I'll be sharing the updated version of this in the literature review slash discovery channel uh, channel. And basically this is the attempt, the starting point to try and bring some structure to the extreme complexity of all this flow. And just to briefly discuss, there is the data infrastructure that is also working with the ontology engines. But in reality, that's a, like a combined piece as well as, you know, all of these pieces are interconnected. And sometimes it's hard to like explain the differences where they uh, start becoming separate pieces and when they converge just because of the complexity. But that's a, at least a way for us to vi visualize and transform it to something descriptive. One thing that I think would be useful is for us to work, so there's a couple of pieces. One that I'm gonna to try to reach out to the different team leads to do for now, um, but to simply get um, the, more than just the sentence description we have, but a little bit of detail from each one about what we're doing there so that we can take what now is sort of a skeleton org chart and start fleshing it out into something that can help us and outside folks understand what it is we're working on and how we're working on it. The other piece that I think would be useful is for us to start um, doing that more detailed mapping of our data layer and of our code layer so that it's there's a, a simple way for us to look to understand where would where what do we actually have in terms of assets and where would go to to access them. Because I know we you know we started GitHub centralized. We then went to something more distributed. We've been moving towards diverse and just wanting to understand where all of the bits live and make sure that we have a comprehensive catalog of those so that people know, know what's going on. Something like that may already exist. And so if it does, then, then if someone wants to, to point me towards it, that's awesome. But otherwise, I think we should create that as soon as we can. <coughs> want to uh, report in? Oh we got anybody in chat who hasn't said anything in a while? Uh, w, don't even know what that is. Michael Hoff, I would have chat. I was chatting with him yesterday. I think he's going to try and I'm going to. I've asked him to try and help us collate our our language usage and how we explain things and and trying to again going back to consistency of explaining what we're doing and um, the sort of copy of it because right. he's a copy editor and copywriter. So that might be a somebody who's going to be better at explaining things than my fangled attempt at it or when Daniel's. <laughs> One of the things also that I'll mention um, is because often it's hard to remember which things are talked about in little, uh, you know, this is over in this obscure channel over here, or this is from this daily call over there. Um, but I know there's been a bunch of talk about, about impact and like, is that even the word we should be using and what do we mean when we're saying that? There's some folks who are even saying like, so like, are we doing something after the Kaggle competition? And so I just wanted to, to affirm again, you know, beyond Kaggle, we're, we're continuing, we're looking at long term how we are able to have an impact on COVID-19. We're looking beyond that of how we can be looking at um, what's going on with other pandemics in the future and beyond that at um, AI and data analysis overall for healthcare. When we talk about impact, um, we, so beyond the Kaggle competition, we're hoping to make the specific products that the different teams are working on, but also to say we're, we're actively working to try to liaise with 
different organizations that could benefit from what we're doing. So we're not just trying to build these tools and then sort of throw them in a bottle and throw them in the ocean and hope that something or other happens from them. We're actively trying to make contacts with hospitals, people who might be in that first responder side. We're trying to make contact with the epidemiologists and virologists who could benefit from the tools. We're working at making some municipal and uh, yeah, public health federal public links with, yeah. Yeah, with public health and with policymakers. So we're in the very early stages of that, but know that when we say, when, when, when some of us ramble about impact, that we really do mean we're trying to figure out how we extend beyond our programming pipeline into an actual pipeline that leads out into the things we're doing having a direct impact on both decisions getting made and on how how responses to things happen. So speaking, you know, speaking of that, uh, sorry to interrupt you. There is a uh, some progress, and I'm not sure if I shared it already or not. But you know, redundancy in knowledge propagation helps, even if I did. So there's Dr. Tayeb who's leading the Kaggle. Uh, side of things in terms of literature review stuff and he has actually like full support from Kaggle to do whatever he needs to and he's amazing he's actually coming from a science background he's immunologist and he uh, leads 100 medical professionals that are actually doing literature reviews by hand right now and he reached uh, well I reached out to him but he asked for help to try and uh, move away from Kaggle as the source of where medical professionals look at this stuff because they're super confused with Kaggle as a platform. And we've built a quick version of, um, <coughs> of the interface, which is basically a, a list of tables for the questions that medical professionals consider valuable. And even though we're still working within this Kaggle submission, right? But the questions that are phrased there are not, you know, they're not that relevant and not that specific for to be useful for medical professionals. And they're taking their step at creating this, uh, you know, baseline of uh, usefulness. And more it, concrete questions, yeah? Is that what they're correct. trying to do? More yeah. concrete, more measurable <coughs> questions rather than like, what is this general thing generally, which is just really hard to quantify. Exactly, like the uh, adhesion to hydrophilic phobic surfaces. I have no idea what that is, but hydrophilic phobic. I'm assuming that's something that's it, it's, yeah. whether water, it's whether water attaches to it or water or attaches to it or not. Yeah, it's because <coughs> hydrophobic surfaces are things that have repelled yeah. water. But yeah. the the amazing thing is that uh, uh, Dr. Tayeb and his medical professional community is actually creating the first benchmark. Uh, the 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 benchmark to use uh, machine learning methods against and because yeah, we can use that as the as a <coughs> model to learn how to emulate that sort of knowledge graphing yeah Correct. so this is amazing and uh this is just a starting point to have a uh, question Go ahead. um the risk factor will also be breaking down into these specific questions or should we seek to to the kind of structure we had initially because this might well you know change mm -hmm. the extraction way uh yes good question i don't have an answer for that but i think uh you know organically as we proceed we will have a much better idea of the ontology the task risk will be using for the output uh because like obviously Daniel, can you? Oh, that's my. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, what I was going to say is the fact that uh, this initial literature review benchmark is uh, giving us uh, a glimpse into how the outputs should be looking like. And even though it's not final, and again, it's human cur curated, but it, it gives us at least some structure. So I wouldn't focus on looking at this and changing any of your approaches, but potentially maybe in a couple of days as we proceed within this angle, there will be a valuable call to have. Uh, especially please make sure we are updated. Please, please, please. Yeah, especially, and maybe you can give an update uh, on, because uh, you know, I know you're connected with Anna, who's the heart disease um, related researcher. And right. 
maybe she will be a good interface between task risk and you know all of this stuff. <coughs> You're muted. I didn't speak. It's oh, okay. so clear. <laughs> yeah. All, all right. Uh, that was it on on my side of things. Oh, that's great. All right. Uh, if there's any other other details people want to kind of throw into the mix, now's a great time. Otherwise, we can uh, can wind down the call and then figure out what we want to do for uh, for tomorrow. I have a suggestion as well. Um, as we try to streamline these calls and make sure that we're kind of surfacing. I mean, the function of these calls as the daily general call is to surface any of the stuff that's most relevant to either have general discussion on or to make sure that each of the different teams is aware of. So one thing that would be useful is if we simply have, and whether it's people throw it into a channel or just ping it to, you know, Arthur or Tyler or myself. Um, but if people have something, they're like, here's something we should be discussing on the daily call. Let's start getting those because we can then figure out how to chain those together uh, into an agenda and, and work through that agenda. We've been doing a, you know, a pretty mellow job of, of bringing agenda and running through it. Um, but I think if we can bring a little bit of focus and elicit a little bit more of the details that we should be running through, um, that may help us percolate the information that we need to through the whole system. Great. Thanks everybody. And we'll, uh, we will talk to you soon. All right. Thanks Cheers, guys. everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.